season's officially over, we have known this week there will be some clarity on the ownership situation and some clarity of what's going on with Mason Greenwood. Well, Mike Keegan, a really reliable journalist, has given an update on the Greenwood situation, the takeover situation, and David Ornstein has done and spoken about the takeover situation recently with Five. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the Greenwood situation, what is going on, what's like to happen, what are the reasons behind that, what we know on the takeover from Mike Keegan, from David Ornstein, and then we will talk about Manchester United, what Ornstein said on a 70 million transfer for Mason Mount. My thoughts on that and more. So please do smash that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new and share the video. And I have to say, first of all, 70 million for Mason Mount is a disgrace. He is not worth any more than 50 million. United, please do not be silly enough to do that. If casado has got an 80 million price tag on him, go for him because he's younger, he's better, he's more versatile than Mount. He'll suit our system better. But we'll talk about that later on. Let's talk about the Greenwood stuff initially, um, because this is what's come out just now by Mike Keegan. Well, an hour ago by Mike Keegan saying, breaking Manchester United are considering sending Mason Greenwood out on loan for the whole of next season. He said, Italy, Spain and Turkey are thought to be the three likeliest options for Mason Greenwood on loan. Am I shocked by this decision, United's decision to send Greenwood on loan? Absolutely not. This is what I almost had a feeling would happen. I had a feeling we'd bring him back to train and we'd sell him or we'd loan them out. Now, we know with Mason Greenwood, basically United just keep stalling making a decision. They obviously know it's a difficult decision to make, and I don't think they really want to make a decision because they know that he's a very good, very talented player and that he could save them money on a big striker, but they know how uncomfortable some fans would feel with him coming back and that they would lose a lot of money with sponsorships and people with him coming back. However, they also say that he was not technically found guilty. He's back with the girl, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of ways you can spin that whole situation, and we're not going to get into whether I think we should have him back or not. But it seems that United's conclusion is let's send him out on loan. We don't lose him. His value might go up. He's got interest from Italy, Spain, Turkey. And, you know, it doesn't shock me. I think, you know, some people feel that United should just make a decision and get rid of him and just chop him off. But United don't want to lose one of their biggest assets that they've been paying for two years to not play to a direct rival. They, they probably want to loan him out. It was also said by Mike Keegan that an overseas loan is the most likely option for Mason Greenwood. The option would allow the reaction of the public as well as the mental health and level of performance um, of Greenwood to be gauged. And it says that Man United's reasoning for sending Greenwood abroad is because obviously abroad it would be a little bit different. It'll probably be easier for Greenwood who get less stick, but they want to see how Greenwood deals with his return. You know, people say, bring Greenwood back, he's unreal. Greenwood would have scored 30 goals this season under Eric Tenog. You know, some people say that, but actually Greenwood's not playing football for nearly two years mentally not playing football for two years has he been training everything that's gone on the fans the stick the reputation he'll get if he walks into a new club will he be the same player to have you know that such crucial years of development to have two years out of football and mentally have basically the whole world dislike you will he be the same player that's the question i think united go we could bring him back and he could be useless and we're playing him and he's useless and we've brought him back for no reason and we deal with the aggro of bringing him back for no reason. Because United know they're going to get a lot of aggro for bringing him back. And I think United are sending him out on loan to assess if he's good or not still. I think if he's good on loan and he smashes it on loan, United will be like, yeah, we'll, we'll bring him back. We'll go through that aggro is worth it because he's, he's unreal. I'm not saying he's worth it, but I'm saying that's how United might think of it from a business perspective. If he's crap on loan, United know to get rid. You know, I think that's what United's doing. And I saw an interesting tweet by someone called Ethan who said this. He said, Man United are either A hoping his value increases and selling him next summer. B, hoping he changes public perception by having a good season elsewhere. Or C, delaying because they're too frightened of the backlash right now and uncertain over ownership and what they might want to do with him. And I think that's probably what's going on. Send him out on loan. If they do plan on selling him, his value could increase. See if his public perception changes, if the public, you know, see if it improves his image. And also they, they just want to keep delaying making a decision. They haven't done the investigation. They've got bigger problems than Mason Greenwood. They've got this takeover. They've got this transfer window, which for me is far more important than the Mason Greenwood situation. This is about kicking on in Eric Tenog's next season. Because even if Greenwood stays, who knows if he's good enough to be a regular striker for United again? Who knows if he comes back to be the same player? You know, United have got far bigger issues than Mason Greenwood. Get rid, get them out on loan. Probably the simplest thing United can do. And, you know, we can get on with other business. But I, I do think it, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes out on loan. I think that will be what United do. Delay it, see if he's good, see if his value goes up, see what his perception is. But United, no, if they bring him back now, people will be outraged. But, you know, we can't unhear those voice notes. You can't unhear those audio notes. People will feel very uncomfortable if he comes back. And I think United have realised that. And, you know, if he comes back and he's absolutely rubbish... What was the point of bringing him back, you know? Because yes, he's a good player. Yes, he wasn't found guilty. But everyone heard those voice notes. Everyone 
heard those audio notes and what we heard was absolutely horrific um and people feel very strongly on this but enough of greenwood we'll definitely get some clarity on that so soon let's talk about what we know on the takeover so mike keegan said this new a conclusion over the manchester united takeover process is likely in the coming days so he's saying we're finally going to get some clarity soon i mean we've been told that for weeks and we never have but it's come from mike keegan he's saying yeah we should find something out in the coming days the worrying thing is all the news coming out right now is indicating that Sergio Ratcliffe is in negotiations with Rain, doing the final details to enter into that kind of preferred exclusive bearded period, which means if there is an announcement in the coming days, it looks like it's going to be Sir Jim because they've been preparing this Sir Jim stage for a while. It was said by Ornstein about ownership that it has emerged in recent weeks that Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid feels like it's in a really strong position. They've gone into detail in negotiations. There is optimism that it will win in the end. And David Ornstein is saying there's optimism from Sir, um, Sir Jim's side that he will win in the end. And obviously Sir Jim has a lot more contact with British media and the British media do have kind of a favouritism towards Sir Jim while reporting. But that doesn't change the fact that all the credible sources, despite our hopes for Qatar, are saying, look, Qatar put this bid in. But look, Sir Jim's bid of three billion for 50 percent of the club. That could rise to 3.6 billion with potential shares, how much the value of United goes up. The Glazers see Sir Jim as his best offer and Sir Jim seems to be saying to people and the Rain Group seems to be saying to people that Sir Jim is in more advanced period and very confident. However, you know, they've not announced Sir Jim yet after him being leading the race for so long and this Qatar bid's come in and they're waiting a couple of days. Could, we'll have to wait and see what happens here as well. But what I do want to talk about and, you know, I want Qatar and I want new owners, I want that sorted, but... I don't want to spend 70 million on Mason Mount. That's an absolute disgrace. United chuck money around stupidly in a transfer window. Um, you know, 70 million on Mason Mount, one year left on his contract, poor season. For me, he's a 40 million player. Because it's United and United tax, it will be 50 million. 70 million is an absolute shambles. I think there's so many better players than Mason Mount out there. I'd rather sign Declan Rice, I'd rather sign Moises Casado. Uh, I like Enzo Lafia, I like Orkan Koku, I like Maxim Kakare. Of course, we dream of Frankie De Jong, Borella, those kind of deals. Even Kone, who's linked to Liverpool. Turan at Nice, who's a Sergio Ratcliffe player, who he might be saying to Liverpool. There's so many midfielders out there that I like. I think Mason Mount improves us. You know, Mason Mount's an improvement at Ericsson. You play Bruno Mount and... Um, uh, Casemiro in the midfield three and then maybe Lutrio plays as the better fullback and it can work, it can look good. Tanag wanted to play a 4-3-3, he did Ajax. Tanag played a 4-3-3 with Mount, well not with Mount, but with two eights and that's when you do a Mount of Bruno at United. I get all of that and if we sign Mount and he's already midfield signing, it's bad. It doesn't help our control problems, it doesn't give back up to Casemiro, which we need to rely on him. It doesn't help us get the ball off the centre-backs, you know, we don't help us retain possession, etc, etc. However, you know, if we sign Mason Mount and we sign Moises Casado or we sign maybe Lavia, it's much better because at least you've got two midfielders in. I think we need two midfielders. But we should not spend any more than 50 million for Mason Mount. But the problem is Chelsea, Todd Bohe, is deluded because it was said this by Mike Keegan. It was said Chelsea expects 70 million plus 10 million in add-ons for Mason Mount. That's up to 80 million. 70 million with add-ons up to 80 million. Now, remember, Real Madrid got quoted much higher on Bellingham. Liverpool got quoted much higher on McAllister. And it gets negotiated down. I do think United will negotiate this down to about 50 million, 55 million. They always start an asking price much higher than what they actually want because they can negotiate it down. And I do think that United will negotiate it down and probably end up signing Mount for about 55 million, which I still think is 10 million too much. But if Ten Hag wants him, if Ten Hag's determined to get him, it's fine. But if United spends 70 million pounds on Mason Mount with one year left on his contract, who is an average player, he's not an average player. I think he's a good player. I think, you know, one Chelsea player of the season two years in a row. But... What I mean is he's had an average season, he, you know, he doesn't like, he's not Declan Rice, he's not Moises Caicedo where he comes into United and you're like, wow, you know, you know, he's not been impressive for England. I think he'll be an absolute joke. And I think, you know, some of the prices like James Wall Krause has been quoted at 50 million. He's not worth that. Um, Mason Mount's been quoted at 70, 80 million. He's not worth that. Some of the prices going around, particularly for the English players, are insane. And United really need to make sure they improve their recruitment when new owners come in. So we're not so determined on this inflated English market when there's some absolute ballers out there abroad. Now, guys, please do smash that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new and share the video. That is an update on all of today's news. I hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. Bye.